Hello and welcome. This is the bookworm and I am Amsha Chowdhury. So, as far as I get, everyone here knows about the Booker Prize, right? And every year some book or the other gets shortlisted for it or it gets the Booker Prize and we really look forward to reading those books because if something has been shortlisted or even longlisted for the Booker Prize, that book has to be a gem, right? But I figured that a few years back, a book about Calcutta got shortlisted for the Booker Prize and not many of us have actually read it. It is The Lives of Others by Neil Mukherjee. The fact that it got shortlisted makes it quite clear that it's a great book. But even if you haven't heard of the author or haven't heard of the book, I'll be listing three reasons why you should be reading this one. Number one, the premise. Well, this book revolves around an affluent joint family in Calcutta in the 1960s. What we would today be calling a Bone di Bari. Okay, so they are pretty rich. There is a patriarch, Profulanath, who had his working years in the years leading up to the independence. So there is a pre-independence phase over there. Then he has his own children. They in turn have their own children. So it's a story of three generations based out of Kolkata. And the, and the story revolves around the personal journeys of each of these characters and how they cross paths sometimes. So on the whole, this is about an ensemble cast spread over a long period of time and it encompasses parts uh, topics of history politics and and the thing about this book that i really find interesting is the fact that it exposes the underbelly of the so called enlightened reformed bengali middle class like we as bengalis we like to think that oh we are pretty educated we are cultured and so on and so forth and we are somehow better than the rest of the people we see but actually it's not so this book really brings that to the fore. There is a lot of stuff that you might find disturbing, but it only adds to the depth of the story and I'll be talking about it as we go on. So yeah, that's the premise. Number two, the historical context. Well, as I said, this book traverses through three generations of a family. So naturally, there's a long time period that gets covered in the book. Like the patriarch, Profulanath, was born way before independence and most of his working years were in the years that led up to the Indian independence. So there's that phase which kind of tells you about the outlook of the affluent class towards the like independence struggle. And then his children grew up in the like very initial years of Indian independence, like in the 40s and 50s. And afterwards, when his grandchildren came into play in the late night in the 1960s, late 1960s, there was the Nokshalbari movement in Bengal, and the left was emerging as a like really uh, powerful political front. And there was also a wave of hippies in the urban spaces. So you have that. So what I really think is good about this book is the fact that it gives you an overall knowledge about the social, about the like political and social history of Bengal in the years before the left came into power, because the left government government was in power in Bengal for nearly like thirty four years. So whenever we talk about the history of Bengal, we mostly talk about the left rule and then what has been happening in the state afterwards. Uh, for people my age, we don't really have much reference to what used to happen in the state before the left rule. So that is why I think this book fills the gap because I found a lot of interesting stuff and trivia and a lot of knowledge about that period in general, which we don't really talk about. So that's really enlightening. Point number three, the characters. Well, as I said, this book revolves around a joint family. So naturally, you have a host of characters. As I said, Profulanath is the patriarch, there is his wife, and then they have four sons and a daughter who again have their own children respectively. So there are a lot of people in the book, but a few characters like really, really stand out. Amongst them, one is Chaya. Chaya is Profulanath's daughter. And honestly, growing up in a typical Bengali family, the moment I started reading about her, I knew that I had seen this woman not only in one family, but in a host of other places. First of all, uh, she has a double MA. So, and that was pretty rare in the 1950s, right? So even in the apparently reformed and educated Bengali middle class, that kind of proved to be a challenge when it came to her marriage, right? Because 
they actually had to find someone who was more accomplished than her and that proved to be a task. Add to it the fact that she was really dark and so she had got two things going against her, her looks and her education. As a result, she kind of leads an unfulfilled life, she has unfulfilled desires and as a result, she becomes your typical toxic pishi of the Bengali household. She is unmarried, she stays in the house, she, she is constantly backstabbing everyone, she is talking ill about people behind their backs and honestly I think everyone has that pishi at some place or the other. So, there, so that is a really sad but a very relatable character. The other person who I thought was really stood out was Shuprotik, who was Arinath's oldest son. So I won't tell you much about him because the book kind of has a separate arc for him. And other than that, the other character that I really empathized with was Purva. So Purva is the youngest daughter-in-law of the family who is married to the youngest son. Uh, who's called Shomu and the thing is that like most other stereotypical rich families the youngest son is a brat naturally and he is quite an objectionable person and gets into his fair share of controversies and problems and Purva is just the like poor girl who gets married to the stray son of the family and the family just hopes that marriage will like correct their son in some way which is a pretty dip, like wrong notion but it was there in the families and nobody can deny it so yeah Purva is there and you really empathize with it with her because she doesn't really have any fault of her own but again she's married to a very problematic person and she doesn't really have a way out so there's that and yeah so there's so as i said there's a host of characters if i keep talking about each of the characters this is going to be a 30 minute long video which nobody is going to watch so i'm going to end right there and there's a host of characters they are fun to read this book or more than anything else is very entertaining like i don't know from an outsider's perspective it might be enlightening about the bengali society but as someone who has grown up in a typical bengali household this book was so relatable i related to every character i had seen all these characters somewhere or the other and i'm sure you are going to enjoy it too like be it the social commentary be it the history be it like knowledge about Nokshalbari movement, rise of the left, or sheer petty politics of the Bengali household. This book has it all. And I totally, totally recommend that you go ahead and read this. This one has a fair share of Bengali words, which shouldn't be a problem if you are a Bengali. But in case you are not, there is a glossary at the back. So you can definitely flip through the pages and look up the meanings. It's a fun read. The language is lucid. You shouldn't be having much problem but yeah this is a thick book and it's a long story so feel free to take your time this is not a thriller so you don't have to finish it within a weekend take your time enjoy it i'm sure everyone's going to like it mm, yeah that's about it so thanks for watching and if you like what i do please like share and subscribe and tell your friends about the about my channel i would really appreciate the support also mention in the comments what other reviews or recommendations i can do i'd be more than happy to do them yeah thank you happy reading